It's been three weeks since I picked up this, the final redesigned Galaxy Fold. And I have to tell you, I've had one thing lodged in the back of my head the entire time I've been using this. It's a kind of low level anxiety that somewhere, somehow, at some point, I will do something and break it. Well, that hasn't happened yet. And I'm honestly a bit surprised. I mean, the narrative around the Galaxy Fold has been, this is an overly fragile phone, and if you look at it the wrong way, you're probably gonna break it. To help really get a feel for what this redesign has done for the phone, I've done my best to not baby this thing, which is hard when you're working with a $2,000 phone. I've taken the kid gloves off, and in day-to-day -day use, this thing has held up surprisingly well. But just because it's more durable doesn't mean anyone should finally rush out and go buy this thing. At the end of the day, it's still just an expensive experiment. Let's take a closer look. We ran a full Galaxy Fold review back in April when this thing was supposedly very close to launching. And I still stand by everything I said when it comes to software and overall usability. So to get a full sense of what the Galaxy Fold is really capable of, I strongly suggest you read that review or watch that video before you watch this one. I should also point out that even though this phone has been through a lot since spring, I still can't help but love it in a way. It just offers a new take on the stuff that I tend to do most frequently but the ability to do these things on a small screen or a big screen as needed feels just as powerful now as it did back then. It is, for my money, the best e-reader I've ever used because who doesn't want to start reading on the subway on a nice 7.3 inch screen and then just sort of continue reading on this smaller display when someone squeezes in next to you. I'm very anxious, so I want to take up as little space as possible and that's perfect here. The screen is also great for video if you're okay with the crease and don't mind this sort of side-mounted notch, but I don't think it's that big a deal. I will also say that I spend a lot of time playing video games on my phone, and this provides what I think is the best DS emulation experience ever. The thing about this big screen, though, is that it really is designed to help you get more done. Samsung's multi-window is designed to let you run up to three apps on this display, and if you're clever and get a couple floating windows in there, you can have up to five apps running at the same time. Should you do that? Absolutely not, but I can see certain situations where you're just having one of those days and you have to do a thousand things at once where you could feasibly make the argument that this is valuable. Having said all that, the Galaxy Fold software still needs polish. It still feels very experimental in some ways. Apps that you'd use very frequently, like Instagram, for example, just don't display correctly on this bigger screen, especially if you're looking at someone's Instagram stories. It's also really hard to tell which apps work well in multi-window mode and which don't, so expect a lot of trial and error as you get used to the Galaxy Fold. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't know, this is a $2,000 phone. You shouldn't have to do as much trial and error. I don't think that's unfair. For more on all that, again, I think you should check out our original review, but we have to talk about how much more durable this thing is. Samsung has made a handful of obvious practical changes that go a long way in making this feel more like a phone that's worth $2,000. The original Galaxy Fold, for example, had these weird little gaps at the top and the bottom of the display that stuff could very easily get into. Samsung has capped that now with little bits of plastic and what appear to be adhesive to just sort of seal things off even more thoroughly. It seems to work, but I can also see a little bit of a gap where the adhesive seems to be coming up off of the display. So is it possible something could get in through there? Yes. I don't know that that's necessarily a huge concern, but with a phone like this that just intrinsically has more points of failure than a regular phone, every little crevice, every little potential flaw is, I think, worth pointing out. Speaking of stuff getting inside the phone, Samsung has also redesigned the hinge. If you take a look, there's basically no noticeable gap between the hinge and the two sides of the phone. It's a pretty stark contrast to what we had before, a design that for all the world looked like if you had some Cheeto crumbs or pocket schmutz going on, you'd be concerned that stuff would get inside. That shouldn't be the case this time, and the hinge improvements extend beyond there as well to when the screen is open. It actually feels surprisingly sturdy when everything is locked into place, which I definitely could not say about the original Galaxy Fold. One of my favorite shots from our original review video was me sort of doing this, and it's just harder to do now. It still happens, obviously, but by and large, the screen just wants to stay locked in place way more than the original ever did. 
On top of that, this big internal screen just feels a lot less spongy than it used to, which frankly goes a long way in making it feel like you're using a phone that's worth 2,000 bucks. There are, of course, just some intrinsic issues here that some people can live with and some people just won't. Take this screen, for example. There is, no matter how you look at it, a pretty noticeable crease down the middle. It's maybe not quite as noticeable as on the earlier model that we tested in April, but it's still there and it can be a little distracting since your eyes just sort of always notice it. This 7.3 inch internal screen is not covered in glass, making it far more fragile than probably any other smartphone screen you've ever used. Yes, it feels sturdier, and the plastic layer that used to sort of just sit on top of the screen has now been pushed to under the bezel, so you can't lift it up and destroy your phone in the process. That's all undeniably good stuff. But what happens when you drop this thing face down on a sidewalk? What if there's, I don't know, a pebble on the ground rising up from the surface and bypassing that bezel? That is 100% the kind of thing that the Fold cannot deal with, and it's not the only thing either. There are some damaged Galaxy Folds out there, and while the damage might not be as dramatic as what we saw earlier this year, it's still something to keep in mind. Our colleagues over at TechCrunch just closed and opened the phone one day to find a dark dead spot right in the middle of the screen. And you've probably seen CNET's video in which they've opened and closed the phone over 100,000 times. That Fold screen eventually died well before the 200,000 folds that Samsung itself had sort of projected these things would be able to handle. And I get it, that's not exactly a fair comparison. No one is sitting there doing this all of the time, although you're an Engadget viewer, so maybe you will. The point is, it kind of seems like even Samsung doesn't know if and when these screens will give out. It's a matter of happenstance. And really, that's what stays with me the most. I'm no longer concerned that the Galaxy Fold is just going to die on me immediately. It's not going to happen and hasn't happened with either of the phones I've tested so far. It's more durable than most people would have you believe. But do I believe that this will fail at some point? Yeah, I think it's inevitable. I've never used a device like this, one that so acutely reminds me of its own mortality, and that takes a lot of getting used to. I don't know that I could recommend it just because of that. If you buy one of these things, sure, you might have a great time multitasking and playing games and watching video, but on some level, back there in your head somewhere, you'll always be concerned that the next day, or the next day, or the next day will be the Fold's last. So, at the end of it all, after testing two Galaxy Folds, should anyone actually go and buy one of these things? You know the answer to that. No, of course not. What I said in our original review is that the Galaxy Fold is an expensive experiment. And that's still true. If you buy this phone, you're still giving a company $2,000 to be their guinea pig. If that's you, and that's really what you want, then more power to you. We do need people like you out there beta testing the future. For the rest of you who just want something that works, who want something that will help you live life on your terms, not make you meet it halfway, any other phone is probably the way to go. I know I've been a little hard on this thing, but it's only really because I wanted to love it so much. And on some level, I still do. Every reason I laid out earlier, from sweet multitasking, to gaming, to reading, to watching videos, it all works better here than on other devices. The thing to really keep in mind, though, is that even after all of Samsung's work repairing and redesigning and fixing all of those little issues, this phone is still just an essential first step towards really figuring out what a foldable can and should do. For more news on the Galaxy Fold and really everything else going out there in Techland, be sure to keep watching Engadget, subscribe, and thanks for watching.